Hello and today I'm going to be talking about FACEM or Fellowship of Australasian College of Emergency Medicine exam which is a final exit exam leading to a specialist qualification here in Australia. Now like all other fellowship exams, FACEM exams are tough and have notoriously low passing rate. The exam extract joy and put a lot of strain on yourself whilst trying to maintain a strict study discipline and balancing work and family life. But at the end, it's all worth it with a huge sense of personal achievement and professional achievement. I find fellowship exams are like those life targets which once achieved would radically change your professional and personal life. In this video, I will tell you about the eligibility to sit the fellowship exam, the fellowship exam components, and time required for the preparation of each of the components. What about the books and resources to read? I'll give you my own personal insights, value of courses and trial exams, and my strategy that helped me optimize my limited study time with work and family commitments. Now, most candidates who would have done all their training in Australian hospitals are eligible to sit the exam, but there are certain candidates who would have specialist recognition pathways from the US, UK, Canada, and some other countries. So please do check ASIM website if it applies to you. you. Must have completed 36 out of 48 months of advanced training, paid all the registration, dues, and fines to the college. You must have also satisfactorily gone through all the in-training assessment and work-based assessments. Australasian Fellowship Emergency Exam has two components written component and OSCE or a clinical component. Now important note is that from 1st of January 2018 all candidates will have maximum of three attempts for the written fellowship exam and maximum of four attempts at the clinical or OSCE examination. So if you are unsuccessful on your final attempt then you may be considered to leave the training program altogether. Now the written exam is of six hour duration in one day and it's divided into two three hour exams. The first part is three hours of short answer questions. The next three hours is another component called multiple choice question. It's based on five responses and you need to select one response. OSCE exam. Now OSCE exam is conducted over two days. It was mostly conducted in AMC National Centre in Melbourne, but now there are more, more centres available in regional locations here in Australia. Now there are 12 OSCE stations. Each OSCE is 11 minutes and this will include 4 minutes of your reading time followed by 7 minutes of assessment. Now the areas of assessment in OSCE exams are history taking physical examination, a challenging communication situation which might be between a patient, relative, staff member and they are trained actors, medical students, even face some examiners. Now number four area of assessment could be team-based simulation in which you might be managing a patient who is critically unwell on a high fidelity mannequin. There would also be assessment in areas of teaching or advice to the junior staff and finally there would be standardized case-based discussion. Time required for the written exam for me, as I was working full time, I dedicated 12 months of core study time and further three months of assessment based study through courses and trial exam. I do think for someone who's got family or job commitments, one and one and a half years is a standard time for the whole of the exam, which includes written as well as the OSCE. Now I made my own timetable, which was spread over eight months and I allocated set number of weeks to each of the important topics. Resources and books. Now everyone have their own way of going through the recommended text. And there's some recommended text on the college website as well. Now I did what I call a proactive study. I would do the question or an MCQ or an SQ, and then read around the knowledge which is being asked in that topic from a book. My get-go book was Tintin Alley. Other online resource was Life in the Fast Lane. I would then make notes or flashcard uh, so that I do not have to open the textbook or search online in the final weeks leading up to my exam. Now, I would recommend to do lots and lots of MCQs. And after about 1,000 or so MCQs, on completely random topics, you'll get a pretty fair idea of these recurrent important topics which get frequently asked. So you will eventually go through the entire of the text, but more specifically so in exam high yield topics. Now, now for SAQ, I followed the exact same approach. Do as many SAQ, but under exam conditions and then read around the topic to fill in the knowledge gaps. And then again, the reading was based from the book Tintinelli 
and the online resource, which was mainly life in the fast lane. There was also some text uh, talks book, which was Murray, which I followed. But most of the information now these days are available online as well. I did not have a study partner or join any group for the written component of the exam. It is pretty much your own study pattern and timetable depending on your work commitments. That's why I felt that I need to do the bulk of the hard work myself. Now, there was a local fellowship program at St. George Hospital and I think that was a brilliant program. It was stretched over six months and we would do and discuss topics, we would do SAQs and share our answers. Now if you can engage in such a program in your local hospital where there are a number of trainees sitting that uh, exam, it is very good. It keeps you up to date, it has got a timetable that goes through and you can incorporate the timetable into your personal study development plan. Now, I did find at times difficult to attend fellowship on most of my days because I might be working. Now, for the course, I did three-day AFM course, which was in Brisbane, uh, which had initial trial exam and two days of intensive core topic revision. The value of trial exam is paramount when you're preparing for these fellowship exam because I rely on critical feedback, by which I mean that which are the areas where I really need to improve. So I found that course did provide to some extent that critical feedback which helped me improve. OSCE exam. Now as soon as finished my fellowship written, even before getting the result, I started to register for the trial exams around Sydney, uh, which were conducted in various hospitals. Most places would still reject my interest because the results were not out yet. But by the time I got my past results for the written, I had about nine weeks for the fellowship OSCE exam preparation. So a very short time. Now I registered for OSCEs and I just dived deep into it. Now I was given and advice about treating your patient as OSCE cases. Whenever I was on the floor working, I would try each of my patients as they are OSCE case scenarios. Now this practice can be a little trial and error. Firstly, real patients are sick. They're in pain, they're not trained actors. They might be foreign language, Greek, Macedonian. That may not fit the bill of a typical exam scenario type patients. My approach was very simple. I would go to the patient, I would pre-select them if they've got good English, and uh, they're not in a lot of pain and they're not critically unwell. And then I was upfront with them. I'll be honest and say that, look, I've got an exam coming up. Would you mind if I do your consult under exam condition? And if that's okay with you, that will really help me. This approach was more doable in, I think, pediatrics area or subacute area, but also some stable acute patients. Uh, initially, I was not too good in terms of my time management or patient selection, but then with the passage of time, it became really very productive way of studying for exam. Courses for OSCE exam, I went and did the AFM clinical exam OSCE course, which was a two day course. I had a good feedback generally. I pretty much did every trial exam in the local hospitals like Liverpool Hospital, St. George Hospital, Royal Prince Alfred, Prince of Wales. And this was very important for me. I wanted to have that as much diverse feedback all around from different faculties, from different examiners. I also had a little study group, which was uh, three or four people. We would just meet up in the hospital sometime or do a Skype session. And we did lots of OSCE scenario and that was brilliant. It was super useful because it speeds up the learning. Uh, fellowship exams are tough. They extract joy, require blood, sweat, and tears. But at the end, they give you huge sense of achievement in both personal and professional level. My top 10 tips would be, number one, believe in yourself that you will pass this exam and give yourself a realistic time frame in terms of preparation time and based on your circumstances. Number two, don't waste time reading cover to cover books, but read around the topics and solve as many exam papers from trials, recalls. Number three, time yourself always from day one. Exams are all about time study and how rapidly you can reproduce that information under exam stress and exam condition. Number four, my notes and flashcards really help me save a lot of time. Number five, for me, early morning session like four o'clock sessions were good because I would get the bulk of the study out and then would spend the rest of my study time reading around my topics. Number six, for OSCE time practice and having a real diverse experience from real patients, study buddies, and multiple trial exams helped me a lot. Number seven, be open to criticism and feedback. Number eight, eight hours of sleep and 30 minutes of physical activity every day. Good body, good mind productivity max.
weekend at least one day so treat yourself and then refocus on your study it'll boost up your morale and keep you more productive throughout this long process now on the day of my oski exam i felt comfortable because i treated each scenario as an individual exam and that helped me keep relaxed that look even if i've not done well in one scenario the next scenario is an entirely new exam and i'll get through to it the results came out after about eight weeks and i shed some tears of joy when i noticed my number amongst the past candidate. It took me nearly two years to go through this grueling exam schedule and timetable. No matter what anybody says, the success is hidden within proactivity, real hard work and lots and lots of sacrifices. I hope you find this conversation useful. Please leave me a comment. Tell me about your own story of exam preparation, passing or not passing, and what helped you and what did not. I'd love to hear and read your comments. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll get more of these videos. Thank you very much. Good luck for your exams.